Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Capital Area School Development Association Virtual College Fair, and thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your uh, questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are both off, so the panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strifescan.com cast Danny, uh, um, and with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter. Um, so uh, if I could have um, Fairling Dickinson University join us and they can start us off. Perfect, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys shortly. Perfect, so I just shared my screen with you. Um, my name is Alexa, I'm one of the counselors at FDU. So I recruit from students in various counties in New York and even Bergen County, New Jersey, where one of our campuses is located. So with FDU, if you are unfamiliar, we do have four university campuses. We're gonna have two campuses in New Jersey and two international campuses as well. And I'll touch on all of those shortly. So the two in New Jersey, like I mentioned, one is in Bergen County. It's in two towns. So we're in Teaneck and Hackensack, New Jersey, all the way in the most Northern County. Our other campus is called the Florham Campus, which is in Morris County, about a 45 minute drive from the Metropolitan Campus in Bergen County. Both of our campuses are gonna offer over a hundred majors and organizations for you to choose from. We do have a variety of majors offered on both of those campuses. Some majors are only offered on one specific campus or another, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Our student faculty ratio is 12 to one. Our average class size is around 16 students or less. We do of course offer some lecture classes, introductory courses that all first year and second year students need to take. Those can be anywhere from 30 to 40 students, but we'll never go over that class size limit. We like to build that one on one personalized time with your professors. They get to know you, you get to know them. We do offer over 140 clubs and organizations between the two campuses in New Jersey. We do also have students building their own clubs, create, again, creating own, their own clubs, internships, job opportunities at FDU, as well as study abroad that I briefly mentioned before. Other ways to get involved on campus, we do have residence life and housing. If you are interested in residing on campus all four years, we do have that available. We do also have a, what we call combined degree advantage program where students can graduate in five years with two degrees, their bachelor's and their master's. We have over 40 majors listed here right now. So if you are interested in doing this, there's no separate application. You just need to let your academic advisor know, okay? FDU is also a private institution. So we do offer our own in-state or in-house and in FDU grants. Um, and we also accept obviously state and federal grants and loans from the FAFSA if you fill that out. The major difference in comparison between the two campuses in New Jersey breaks down on this slide right here. Our Metro campus houses our division one athletic sports teams. We're gonna have around 3000 undergraduate students studying at the Metro campus a little less than 2000 graduate students. So students studying their master's, PhD programs. Around 50% of our first year students are residing on the Metro campus in Bergen County. And we do have a lot of students commuting from Bergen County, even New York City, or even um, Long Island, or excuse me, Staten Island. For the Florham campus, we'll have our division three athletic sports teams on this campus, uh, around 2,600 undergraduate students, a little less than a thousand graduate students studying here. It does have our pharmacy school on this campus, FY. So if anyone's interested in pharmacy, that's at the Florham campus. And around 70% of our first year students are residing on that campus. Other 30% are commuting. Our Metro campus, this is a quick snaps snapshot image of it that you can see right here. Again, as mentioned, split between the two towns of Teaneck and Hackensack, New Jersey with the Hackensack River dividing our campus right in half. A much more modern campus feel and vibe to this just five miles outside New York City. The Florham campus is our more traditional standard college campus. It has those brick buildings, white columns, a lot of green grass quad or hangout areas that you can see in this image here. That's a lot what our Florham campus looks like. All right. For breaking down the schools and colleges at FDU, we do have nine separate schools and colleges that house all of our majors at FDU. I do want to point out just a few of them. Our 
Um, Gildert How Haas House of Computer si School of Computer Science and Engineering, excuse me, houses all of our engineering majors, which are only offered on the Metropolitan Campus. You can also only study marine biology on the Metro Campus, as well as criminal justice. And then School of the Arts is one small school, a subcategory of our College of Arts and Sciences, which is located on the Florham Campus only. So if you're interested in film and animation, theater, graphic design, anything like that, that's only at the Florham campus. All right. On top of everything else, we do offer internships, job opportunities. This is really through our Office of Career Development. So get in contact with them. They'll set you up with job opportunities, networking opportunities, college and career fairs, anything like that. And then again, as mentioned before, we do offer study abroad via our two international campuses. So if you are interested, we can send you to either our Roxton campus in England or our Vancouver campus in Vancouver, Canada, or we do have partnerships with other institutions globally. So definitely feel free to check that out um, and take your education elsewhere. Applying to FDU really quickly, we are offered on the Common App as well as on FDU's own website. We offer early decision, which is a binding commitment, early action, which you're just applying early for some benefits, and then rolling admissions where our application is open all year long. We do require your high school transcripts to be submitted as well as your application and then test scores at this time are optional, okay? The deadline for early decision or early action is gonna be December 1st for juniors this year. If you are admitted, you'll receive a thousand dollar grant renewable for all four years you attend FDU as well. And then on the bottom there are FAFSA codes. If you do fill out the FAFSA and apply to FDU. And then my contact information, if you do have questions, I can also throw it in the chat for you guys as well. Okay, perfect, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Alexa, for giving us a little bit of information about what Fairling Dickinson University offers. Next up, we have our presenter from Mamapo College of New Jersey. Hi everyone, my name is Kerry. I'm an admissions counselor at Ramapo. I'm gonna be sharing my screen in just one moment, just bear with me. So again, my name is Kerry. I'm an admissions counselor at Ramapo. I'm also an alum of Ramapo as well too. Sorry, give me one second. There we go. Uh, so Ramapo is located in Bergen County, uh, right in Northern Bergen County in Mawa. We're on a pretty suburban campus and we're only about 45 minutes from New York City. We are the smallest state college in New Jersey. However, we do have about 6,000 students on campus with a 16 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of 21 students. The maximum class size that you'll ever see at Ramapo is 35 students, even in uh, your first year. So Ramapo College enrolls a diverse student body with a 42% new student diversity rate. There are over 40 countries represented in the entire student body. Just in the incoming first year class, there are nine states and six countries represented. And not only does Ramapo enroll a diverse student body, um, but with a 88% retention rate, students stay at Ramapo and they also graduate on time. Ramapo has been awarded um, as the uh, number one among nine public New Jersey colleges. And we also have the number one dorms in the state of New Jersey. Recently, we were rated as being one of the top 50 most beautiful college campuses in America as well too. At Ramapo, we have five academic schools on campus with over 100 different majors, minors, and concentrations within our five schools. That's our Annisfield School of Business, our School of Contemporary Arts, Humanities and Global Studies, Social Science and Human Services, and Theoretical and Applied Science. Some of our most popular programs are nursing and biology, communications, uh, psychology, psychology, I'm sorry, management, as well as education. We also offer articulated programs with outside institutions, such as our art therapy program with Caldwell University, um, multiple pro programs with Lake Erie College of Medicine, a law program with Seton Hall University, uh, optometry, pharmacy, osteopathic medicine, and physical therapy. These are all early acceptance programs that you do need to apply to when you're applying to the college. Ramapo also offers over 10 graduate programs as well as four plus one programs, meaning that you can obtain your bachelor's and your master's degree within five years. These include a flex MBA, accounting, special education, uh, data science, and creative music technology. 
There are so many academic opportunities available at Ramapo, including our college honors program, career and internship fairs on campus, as well as over 1,000 internships in New York City, since we're only 45 minutes from New York City. Each academic school also includes a pathway program that provides resources and prepares students to apply to internships, graduate school, or to enter the job market. We also offer over 500 different study and intern abroad programs in over 60 different countries. So as I mentioned before, we do have the number one residence halls in the state of New Jersey. They're all suite style, meaning that there's no communal bathrooms. Um, all uh, suites have semi-private bathrooms. We also offer two apartment complexes and all of our residence halls are a very close walk to the academic complex, maybe about five minutes. As a first year student, you can have your car on campus and you can also pick your own roommate. There are many different ways of getting involved on campus, whether it's being involved in a club, student leadership program, fraternity, sorority, or professional honor society. We have over 120 different clubs, including cultural, academic, religious, recreational, entertainment, political, and social and special interest groups. We also have 18 division three athletic teams, as well as intramural and club sports. Um, there's also many different ways to volunteer. So a little bit about our application requirements. Uh, right now we are test optional for all programs besides our articulated programs, but all you need is the application for admission. You can use the Common App, the Ramapo College App, or the Coalition App. We'll need your high school transcript. Typically we look for about a 3.4 on a 4.0 scale. Two letters of recommendation are preferred, but only one is required. And then we do accept AP and IBHL credit. So there's a few different deadlines um, and admission types. There's early decision that's binding. That deadline is November 1st, early action, which is December 15th. That is non-binding and regular decision, which is February 1st. If you do wanna be considered for merit-based scholarship, make sure you apply by that December 15th deadline. So Remapo has received recognition and a number of awards and return on investment. Many students are able to receive financial aid, scholarships, grants, and other financial sources to help reduce and pay for tuition. As I mentioned, all first-year applicants are considered for merit-based scholarship as long as you apply by that December 15th deadline. We also offer over 400 different scholarships when you're enrolled in the college, um, but a little bit about the merit-based scholarship, we offer a presidential, which is full tuition and fees, and then a dean scholarship, which is half tuition and fees. And this is my contact information. I can also add it uh, inside the chat. I primarily work with all of our out of state and international students as well as parts of Bergen County. So you can contact me anytime by email, phone or text. Also make sure you go to our website, www.ramapo.edu slash learn. It's the best way to learn more about Ramapo College. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Carrie, for talking to us a little bit more about Remipo. Um, now, up next, we have St. Peter's University. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Um, my name is Kaylee. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm Assistant Director of Undergrad Admission at St. Peter's University. Um, so welcome. Um, so I want to start off, St. Peter's is a Jesuit university. Um, this means different things to a ton of different people, uh, but we like to say that our students come for a degree but leave with so much more. Um, one of the big takeaways from this is really community service. We have over 50,000 hours of community service as a campus, um, including tons of different clubs and activities for our students to do that revolve around community service. Um, one thing I do want to get clear right out of the gate is you do not need to be religious to attend St. Peter's. Uh, we are welcoming to everyone of every different different background, faith, religion, all of that stuff. Um, we are a pretty small school, about 3,600 students total. Um, student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Um, and Cure Personalis, which is a Jesuit tradition, um, is something that's very important to us. It's something we really believe in. Um, it means care for the whole person. Um, so this means your professors and everyone at the school care about you more than just academically. They care about you as a person um, and wanna see you succeed in all aspects of your life, not just academics. Average class size your freshman year is usually around 22. Uh, can get down to as low as 13 or 14 once you get more into your concentration. And we even have some labs with as few as six or seven students. Um, there's that 50,000 hours of community service that I talked about. Um, our mascot is a peacock, um, that's Peter. He is really cool and we love to see him around campus um, and at games and things like that. Uh, we do have a 94% job placement rate after graduation. So we're really proud of our students and really proud of that number. 
We are located in Jersey City, New Jersey. So we're about 12 minutes from Manhattan. Um, you just hop on the PATH train there, which is almost like the subway and it takes you right into the city. Um, so some amazing opportunities for internships as well as fun things to do. Um, around campus. So we do offer over 50 majors at St. Peter's, some of our more popular majors, um, biology, psychology, criminal justice, nursing, and business um, are our top five. And we do have some awesome state-of-the-art technologies for those. Um, for our business majors, we have a trading room that kind of simulates Wall Street. For our nursing majors, we have a nursing sim lab. Um, we have a new cybersecurity center, and we're also working on a new center um, for artificial intelligence and machine learning for our students in that major as well. Um, so we're really excited about that. We do have over 70 clubs on campus, um, which is a ton for a school of our size. Uh, we have everything from academic-based clubs to religious clubs, cultural clubs, um, and even those fun clubs, like we have a knitting club and we have a puppy club where you actually train a service dog, which is really, really cool. Um, there's also a ton of events that our campus puts on for our students. Um, so you can see here, this picture is of the Peacock Color Run. Um, so we go out and run around campus and um, just like the color, color Me Rad runs that we have. Um, so it's definitely a great, great opportunity and really fun for our students. Um, we also have intramural sports as well as extramural sports. Um, for athletics, we are division one. You can see the sports listed here. Um, men's and women's basketball is definitely our most popular. Um, our students love to go to those games and cheer on our peacocks. For residence life, you are guaranteed housing all four years at St. Peter's. Um, we do have multiple options, doubles and triples. Um, freshman, sophomore year is usually the traditional residence hall style, while junior and senior is usually apartment style housing. Um, we are about 60% commuter students, 40% resident. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, for the application process, um, we do what's called a holistic reading at St. Peter's. So we look at everything. Um, so we know you're more than just your GPA, um, but we do take a look at that. Uh, we also look at test scores, but we are test optional for everything but our nursing major. Um, so you don't necessarily need to submit those to us. Um, we do look at your point of view expressed through your essays. We read your letters of recommendation um, and all that good stuff to assess your readiness for college and your fit um, at St. Peter's. Cost of, uh, cost of attendance, you can see here tuition's around 39, room and board's around 16, bringing your total to around 55. And I know that's a really big number, um, but absolutely nobody pays that because every student who's admitted to St. Peter's does receive a scholarship. This year, our baseline scholarship was $20,000 and it moves up with GPA and or SAT score all the way to a full ride. Um, we also offer an extra grant if your parents or grandparents went to St. Peter's or if um, you go attend a Catholic school. So if you're ready to apply, um, we are a free application. We are on the Common App and do have our own application um, that can be found on our website. And I've also thrown my email there. So uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Thank you so much. Um, next up, we have Clarkson University. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kim. I am an admissions counselor at Clarkson University. Uh, we're in a different location. We're in northern New York in a town called Potsdam. Um, so we're in the same town as SUNY Potsdam, and we're about 10 minutes from St. Lawrence University and SUNY Canton. Uh, we're in a small rural area, uh, but a really great college town atmosphere. We have about 3,000, a little over 3,000 students on campus. Our average freshman class is around 700, and our average uh, classroom size is around 30 to 40 students, so we're a little bit on the smaller side. Um, we'll go through our programs first. We have the School of Engineering, which is our, our biggest school. It's about 50 to 60 percent of our student body, um, so we have eight different engineering majors. We also have different master's and PhD level programs for engineering as well, as well as an engineering studies program. So if you're undecided, Within engineering, uh, aren't sure exactly which uh, you'd like to major in, you can come in and explore for your first year and then decide after that. We also have our School of Business, um, which is about, I would say about 25% of our student body. All of our uh, first year business students do start their own business. It's a little, little similar to the show Shark Tank, if you've ever watched that on TV. Um, you start your own business, um, run it, hopefully make some money, which is always fun. Um, and we start all of our freshman business students out in a undecided business major as well so that you can get a little 
little feel for everything and then decide um, what is the right fit for you. So these are all of our business majors. Uh, we do require that all of our business students study abroad as well at some point to get the international experience. We do quite a bit. Uh, we also have a School of Arts and Sciences. Um, these are all of our hard science majors. Um, so anything from math, biology, um, psychology, environmental uh, majors as well. Um, we are a small research university, so heavy in research. If that's something that you're looking for, it's really easy to get involved in research. Um, simple as asking a professor or advisor and just letting them know that you have an interest in that. Um, so you will definitely get some hands-on experience that way. Um, these are our arts programs. So we have things from communications, history, political science, um, social documentation, which is a really neat program. Um, these also, even though they are kind of in the art side, um, still have a little bit of a STEM foundation, which is important these days. Um, so you still will have a little bit of that, even though you're more of like a liberal program. Uh, we also have pre-health advising, uh, pre-med, pre-dental, pre-vet. Um, we also have a pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, and pre-physician's assistant program on campus. Um, and as you can see, we do have the doctorate uh, physical therapy program right at Clarkson, and then the master's program for occupational therapy and um, physician's assistant right at Clarkson. So you can really do it all in one shot. Um, we also have an MBA, master's for business um, on campus as well. Um, one of the things that we require all of our students to do in whatever school, whatever major you're in, is a professional experience uh, before you graduate. So you can do this at any point. There's an, any specific time. Um, you really do it when you're ready. Um, internships, you can um, do those over the summer. We also offer co-ops, which are six months long. Um, so you would be gone working for a company for that time. Um, research of the professor will also fulfill your professional experience um, requirement. Um, you can do more than one of these. We just require at least one so that you do get some kind of real world work experience before you do graduate. Um, our, excuse me, our internships and co-ops are all paid as well. Um, we do have a couple of career fairs on campus every year where employers will recruit just for the internships and co-ops. So we do help um, students find them um, by having that big career fair right on campus. Um, and then I know I mentioned business students are required to study abroad, um, but it is open to all students. Um, so even if you're not a business student, you can absolutely study abroad. We do have about 55 schools that we're partnered with in 28 different countries. So um, you're getting taught in English and taking the same classes that you would need at Clarkson. Uh, we're definitely a very active campus. We have between 200 and 250 clubs and organizations on campus. So anything from Greek life, outdoor activity, music, dance, um, there's all sorts of things, a lot of volunteering that you can get involved in. Um, there's definitely something for everyone. We're just outside the Adirondacks, so um, outdoor activity like hiking and skiing and things along those lines are really popular with our students. Uh, we are a residential school, so housing guaranteed all four years, and most students do stay on campus. Uh, we also have SPEED teams. Uh, SPEED stands for Student Projects for Engineering Experience and Design. Um, these are real projects that students can work on um, to get some hands-on experience. Um, engineering's in the title, but they are open to all students. Um, the teams still have a business aspect or a communication side, um, so students in all majors can play a role in those. And they go to some really, really big competitions and do um, pretty well, so that's always exciting. Um, we're also about 20 miles from the Canadian border, so we're very close to Ottawa and Montreal. Um, so normally students are able to go and explore some pretty cool cities for the day, um, eat some, you know, great Canadian food and um, just Kind of have a change of scenery um, that's not too far away. For athletics, we do have Division I men's and women's hockey, so those games are really fun to go to in the winter. Our women's team were the national champions uh, three year, three times within five or six years, um, so that was really exciting. Uh, we play a lot of other um, teams like Harvard, Dartmouth, um, Yale, um, schools like that, so um, definitely some good school spirit on campus. Um, we're the Golden Knights. Uh, all of our other um, sports are Division Three, so um, definitely a lot of students going to the games. Um, they're very well attended um, for all the sports. And then our application requirements, uh, just the high school transcript, two letters of recommendation. We are test optional, um, and we do take the Common App or our own Clarkson app, um, and you're automatically considered for scholarships just by applying. So that's campus, so thank you very much, and have a good one. Thanks a lot, Kim, for talking to us a little bit more about what Clarkson University has to offer. Now, next up, we have Seton, Uni Seton Hall University um, to talk to us a little bit about what they offer. 
Great, thank you so much. Um, so hello everyone. Thank you so much for having me this evening. Uh, my name is Kim Thompson. Um, I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions at Seton Hall. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about our school. Um, so we are a private Catholic co-ed institution and we are considered to be medium sized, which we believe gives the best of both worlds. So we have tons of majors and lots of research opportunities that you would typically get at the larger institutions. But then we offer the small nurturing classroom environments that you would typically see at the smaller schools. We're conveniently located in South Orange, New Jersey, which is um, in the suburbs. Um, however, we're just a quick 20 minute drive from the Newark airport. We're 30 minutes from Manhattan. Um, and then we're one hour from Philly, the mountains and the beaches. So, you know, our location really allows our students to experience everything. We have about 6,200 undergraduate students. And um, if you combine that with graduate students, we're at a little over 10,000 total. 55% of our students are female, 45% are male. We do have all 50 states represented as well as 70 countries and a 45% diversity rate. Our average class size is just 21 students. Um, each year that you're in your program of study though, you'll find that those class sizes will gradually get smaller and smaller. Freshman English is one of the larger classes you'll experience because every student takes it regardless of major, but still on average, it's only about 15 students. We have a student to faculty ratio of just 14 to one with close faculty mentorship and minimal graduate assistance. At Seton Hall, you'll never be taught by just a GA. They're usually assisting the professor with labs and things of that nature. Um, also as part of the tuition, our students get internship and career services, um, counseling and psychological services, disability and support services, um, a tutoring center, um, both on campus um, and in the dorms, as well as health and wellness. So we offer uh, seven undergraduate colleges, which um, provide over 90 programs to choose from. We have the College of Arts and Sciences, which is our oldest and largest, our School of Diplomacy and International Relations, our Stillman School of Business, College of Nursing, College of Education and Human Services, College of Communication in the Arts, and our School of Theology. So lots to choose from. We also have several unique programs. Um, we have a partnership with Stevens, um, which gives us students degrees in engineering as well as artificial intelligence. We have several dual law programs with our law school, um, School of Health and Medical Sciences, which is um, dual degree programs on the health sciences, which are extremely popular, and also a joint MD program. Our students have opportunities with tons of internships. It's not necessarily a requirement for every major to complete an internship, but our students do recognize the importance of it, and many of them will graduate with one or more uh, before they've, they've completed their program. 81% um, of our students, like I said, have um, completed an internship, and we have an employment rate at about 92%. Um, our Center for Academic Success is our freshman advising program. All students will initially be advised through the Center for Academic Success, where they will be paired with a peer advisor who's a current student on campus in a similar major to themselves, as well as a faculty or um, administrator who will act as their first year advisor. This has been extremely helpful in um, assisting our students with transitioning uh, to college. In terms of clubs and organizations, we do have over 130 clubs and organizations to choose from. They range from the dance team to a Harry Potter club, Global Medical Brigade, uh, you name it. We also have Greek organizations to choose from, uh, lots of performances on campus and in the South Orange Performing Arts Center. We bring dances, carnivals, festivals, um, everything you could possibly think of. We do try to accommodate our students. Pirate Pride, we have 14 Division I athletic teams and we're in the Big East Conference. Our most notable sport is our men's basketball team, but we do have a ton of other really great um, uh, athletics. We also have over 25 club and intramural sports. They're very popular amongst our students. About 50% of our students will typically choose to participate in one or the other. For residence life, we don't require that freshmen stay on campus. However, 80% of our students do choose to, um, and it's about 50% of the total undergraduate population. We do have six residence halls and two apartment buildings, and we offer doubles, triples, and four-person suites. Uh, so for cost, this is um, a kind of a scary number. Uh, we're about 61,000 per year if you include everything, tuition fees, room and board, uh, but it really is just a sticker price. We can be very affordable. Only about 2% of our students actually pay that full uh, tuition price. We do as best as we can to close the gap as much as possible um, in the form of grants and scholarships. And many of those do come directly from Seton Hall. Um, so when you're ready to apply, we have two early action deadlines, both of which are non-binding, November 15th and December 15th. And then we have two regular decision deadlines of February 1st and March 1st. 
We have two applications that you can choose from. We have our own Seton Hall application as well as the Common App. Uh, there's no difference between the two. You can choose whichever one is most convenient for you. We require an essay, um, official high school transcripts, a counselor report. Um, SATs or ACTs are optional. We are test optional at least through fall of 2026 as an accommodation because of COVID. Um, there are two exceptions to that right now, the Joint MD program as well as our College of Education. Um, and we require teacher recommendations. So we do a holistic review of our students, um, but just to give you a sense of what our average admitted student looks like, it's about a 3.6 GPA on a 4.0 scale, an average SAT score of around a 1235, and an average ACT of a 27. Um, so we hope that you can come visit us. We are open to visitors. Uh, we've been open actually since the summer. We will be happy to accommodate you. We offer tours of the campus um, on the South Orange and IHS campus Monday through Saturday. Um, so feel free to come check us out at shu.edu slash visiting. And then here's my contact information if you wanna follow up with anything after today. Um, thank you so much for having me and enjoy the rest of your evening. Awesome, so we have made it to our last goal for this evening, and that's gonna be Rutgers University, New Brunswick. So I will turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Elmo. Good, e uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Drew Newitt. I am the New York area admissions representative for Rutgers, New Brunswick. Rutgers is the State University of New Jersey with three different locations. New Brunswick is the largest of the three by far, and it's considered the flagship campus of Rutgers. Um, I'm gonna change things up a little bit here for the, the final presentation today. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, I'm gonna give you a top 10 list. Uh, these are in no particular order, the top 10 or 10 reasons why I think you should uh, consider Rutgers New Brunswick. First one, number 10, with over well over 100 different majors, I think we're over 120 majors actually, um, you'll find that we actually have majors that you've probably never even heard of before, uh, like BAIT, which is Business Analytics and Information Technology, or Biomathematics. Um, there's others too, um, as well as lots of majors that you've probably heard of before, like Business and Engineering and Psychology um, and Health Professions and things like that. Number nine, Rutgers New Brunswick was actually the site of the very first collegiate football game in the United States way back in 1869. And we're very proud of the fact that we beat Princeton at the very first collegiate football game, uh, six to four. Uh, I guess they scored football games differently back in 1869. Um, and by the way, Princeton was actually known as the College of New Jersey back then. Now we go 103 years later, and Rutgers New Brunswick was another athletic first. We were actually the site of the first collegiate ultimate Frisbee game in the United States. And guess what? History repeated itself. We beat Princeton again, 29 to 27. It was such a big deal. It even made a mention in the New York Times that day. Reason number seven. Well, with about 36,000 undergraduates from all over the United States and honestly, all over the world, with the most diverse student body in the Big Ten Athletic Conference, um, you are pretty much guaranteed that you're gonna make some amazing lifelong friends uh, if you come and uh, attend the university here. Uh, just a really dynamic, active group of people uh, from all over the country and all over the world. Reason number six to think about Rutgers New Brunswick. Um, who knows, maybe you and your new friends at the university will actually end up entering our homecoming bed races. Uh, this is an annual tradition as part of homecoming every fall. Um, and it really is for a good cause. They, they choose a different charity each year and a different focus, um, but basically they raise money and donate goods um, to local charities in New Brunswick and the surrounding communities. Uh, and as you can see, the students really get into this activity. Uh, reason number five, well, with about 175 different research centers and institutes, um, you are gonna have the opportunity to participate in the research if you are interested in doing so, even as an undergraduate student. And our re Rutgers researchers have actually helped develop everything from the first saliva-based COVID-19 test, so none of that nasty sticking that thing up your nose, uh, to the Impossible Burger, the plant-based hamburger that you can now eat in uh, just about every McDonald's, no, I'm sorry, not McDonald's, every Burger King around the country and probably the world too. 
Reason number four to consider Rutgers New Brunswick. Well, Rutgers was actually founded way back in 1766, <clears throat> excuse me, as Queens College, making it the eighth oldest college in uh -huh. America. Um, Alexander Hamilton himself, the famous Alexander Hamilton, camped out on the grounds of Queens College during the American Revolution. <clears throat> Excuse me. Reason number four, or I'm sorry, we're down to three. Fast forward a few hundred years from 1766, and we find Rutgers alumna Stephanie Clemens, class of 04, is the dance captain and the associate choreographer of the Broadway hit Hamilton. Um, she's actually subsequently going on to be the chief choreographer for all of the traveling uh, versions of Hamilton around the country. Reason number two, well, I mentioned earlier, we're a pretty big university, 36,000 undergraduates. So you get all the opportunities and resources of a large public university, but we have the feel of a smaller college. And that's thanks to our campus layout of five smaller kind of distinctive neighborhoods. And you can actually see them in red here at the center part of your screen. So you never really feel like you're on one ginormous campus surrounded by 36,000 other students. And finally, I think the number one reason to think about Rutgers, New Jersey, uh, Rutgers, New Brunswick in New Jersey is after a long day of studying, there's probably no better pick me up than visiting all the animals on the Rutgers farm, which believe it or not, is right on our campus in central New Jersey on New Brunswick. Um, don't have to be majoring in animal science or agricultural sciences or anything like that. It's open to any student that wants to, and you can stop by and say hello to the animals on your way to or from class in the morning or the afternoon. And with that, I would happily hand it back to our moderator. Thank you so much, Drew. All right, folks, so we have wrapped up all of our panelists, um, and they have shared a little bit about their colleges. Now we're gonna move into a quick Q&A session to get their opinion about what you should expect throughout this process. So I'm gonna start off with our first school and I'm gonna welcome back our representative from Fairling Dickinson University and ask her, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, yeah, great question. So I think most, June, whatever grade you are in high school right now, the best thing to do is ask a lot of questions. So. You can learn the most through any university, through the application process, by asking your school counselors, um, your guardians, your parents, siblings, older friends, and then us admissions counselors as well. So when you want to learn more about the university, definitely um, go to the admissions page, websites, go to your admissions counselors, ask us questions. No question is a bad question. Awesome. I love that idea of the open door policy to welcome students to talk to y'all. Um, with that being said, Ramapo College of New Jersey, is there anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, so I mean, agreeing completely with what Alexa said, it was exactly what I was going to say. Um, ask, ask, ask questions. There's no wrong question and use your resources. Uh, that includes your guidance counselor, family, um, but also your admissions counselor. We're not, you know, a big scary monster. We're here for you and we're always here to assist you, especially with if you have any questions about programs on campus or just about campus life. Um, you know, for example, I'm an alum of Ramapo, so I always tell students about my own experience and I think that really assists them. So ask as many questions as you can to anyone that you can. Great, thank you so much, Harry. Um, next up, we have St. Peter's University. Um, yeah, I was honestly going to say the same thing, um, ask a ton of questions, but also if you get the opportunity, definitely go and visit because um, you can definitely get a feel for the school and see if that's someplace that you actually want to be or not. Thank you. And then next up is Clarkson University. I would definitely echo what everyone's already said. Um, asking questions. Um, I wish I had more asked more questions when I was going through the process. Um, probably was a little too nervous, so absolutely don't be afraid to contact the admissions offices or just, um, you know, again, your guidance counselor um, visiting, but also don't be afraid to try a new school, I guess, or, or consider a new school, maybe um, not something that everybody else, you know, has gone to or um, that everyone in your high school went to last year or uh, siblings or, you know, whatever it might be, don't be afraid to, um, you know, just kind of go outside your boundary a little bit and you might find the perfect fit. So that's a great point to definitely own the journey for, for uh, every individual student there. Um, Seton Hall University, anything else that you would like to add? 
Uh, sure, yeah. So um, in addition to what everyone else is already saying, um, you know, there's thousands of schools out there. So narrowing it down can be really scary and really confusing for some. So the very first thing I would actually recommend is to identify what matters most to you. Are you looking for a very specific program? Because that will narrow down your search pretty significantly. Um, does location matter to you? Are you more into the big city? Do you want a suburban campus? Do you want an urban campus? Um, do you want a rural campus? Um, do you want a big school, a small school? Does the campus culture mean a lot to you? Do you want a division one school or does the sports not really matter that much? Um, you know, do you want a school that gives a lot of financial aid or, you know, is, is that not a big factor? Um, and then career outcomes, I would say, you know, is it important to you to be able to get internship experiences and hands-on experiences while you're in school that can then lead to um, full-time employment. So I would say the very first step would be to identify what matters most to you so that you can then help narrow down your search. Great, thank you a lot, Kimberly. Um, and last but not least, again, Rutgers University. Sure, um, I'd add to what my colleague said. I'd encourage you to um, try and reach out to students at that college or college or university that you're looking at um, and talk to them. Um, there's a variety of ways to do that. You might talk to your school counselor and ask about former graduates of your high school who have gone on to specific schools you're looking at. Um, I know at Rutgers New Brunswick, if you go to our Made in Missions website during the week um, and just click chat with us, um, we actually have current students online there available to talk to you. Um, they can tell you about student life, about the majors that they're in. Um, that's probably one of the best ways you're gonna learn more about what it's like to be a student at specific colleges that you might be considering. Awesome. Thank you to our panelists for all that sage advice and thinking through what this process looks like. Now, the next question is probably one of my favorites because I get to learn a little bit more about what different campuses have to offer. Um, so again, we'll go in the same order and we'll start with Fairling Dickinson University. And I'd love to hear, what is your favorite event or tradition that happens on campus? Um, great question. Yeah. So since we have two campuses in New Jersey, we have two separate divisions, Division One and Division Three. So we do have two men's basketball teams. And each fall, we do have both of those teams play against each other to start their season off. So it's like the very first game of the season. And our students from the Florham campus come up to the Metro campus. And it's a really fun game and tradition that they have started quite recently. So it's fun to watch. Awesome. Thank you. You always got to love a good little rivalry there. Um, Ramapo Uni uh, College of New Jersey. Yes, so um, my favorite tradition would probably be our arching ceremony. So when you enroll in the college during welcome week before you start classes, the entire class gets together and you line up and you walk up the hill through the arch and you shake the president's hand. And then when you graduate, you actually do the same thing, but in reverse. And what it really shows is basically your entire journey through Ramapo College. Uh, it's definitely our most popular tradition and favorite among the students. That sounds super neat. Um, next up, we have St. Peter's University. Yeah, so my favorite event is definitely Peacock Palooza. Um, so this is just like a really fun time after classes, before finals start. Um, we have food trucks come to campus and everything's free. You get to hang out. It's like one giant block party for the students. Um, so that's always a great time. Awesome, thank you. And then Clarkson University. So I'm going to have to uh, go with the athletics and the rivalry um, event. We, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're Division One hockey, and we're 10 minutes from our rival, St. Lawrence University, who's also Division One. So since we are so close, it's a very spirited game on campus. A lot of traditions tied to it. Uh, we do a big event where there is an outdoor skating rink and um, ice sculptures and all of that wintry fun stuff that students and alums and um, everyone can take advantage of. So I will have to go with that too. <laughs> nice. Um, Seton Hall University. Yeah, um, so that's an easy answer for me. Um, since 2015, Seton Hall has been ranked number one for holiday events. Um, so we have a big tree lighting ceremony on campus. We have a gigantic tree. There's thousands of lights that get lit up. We have blue Santa hats that we give out to all of the students. There's hot chocolate, there's entertainment. We have speakers dancers. So it's a really big fun event. So hands down, it would be our Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Yeah, that sounds like a ton of fun. Um, and last but not least, Rutgers University. Yeah, I think I'd have to go with our Rutgers University dance marathon. 
Um, it's an annual fundraising event, 24 hours of dancing. Even though they had to do it all virtually last year, last spring, uh, they still managed to raise over a million dollars for children's charities uh, through that one event. Um, and it's totally student organized and student run. That's incredible. It's definitely a great cause. Um, great folks. So that seems like it has taken us to the end of our presentation. So I just want to close out and thank everybody for being here, from our panelists to taking the time to talk to us about their great institutions, to yourselves that are here to learn a little bit more about what the college process is and the options that are available to you. I do want to send a quick reminder and let you know that once you close this window, there's going to be a very quick four question survey. So please just give us any uh, feedback that you could provide. Also, if you would like, there are more sessions being offered. So don't be shy and sign up for more. Um, and in about a week, you'll be able to find the same sessions recording as well as all the other sessions recording at strikescan.com backslash um, CASDA uh, NY. Thank you everyone and have a great day.